while gazing at the night sky filled with stars. Have you ever wondered how it all started? Our story begins with an event called the Big Bang, a powerful explosion that gave birth to everything we know today. In an instant, space and time were created. Matter and energy surged into existence, forming the foundation for all that exists. However, even though we have traced back to the beginning of the universe, questions still haunt us. What's happening at the end of the universe? Are there limits we can explore? And is there a center of the universe that is the focal point of this life and wonder? In this video, you will find answers to the greatest mysteries of the universe. The edge of the universe is an elusive concept in science. The universe is known to be vast and ever-expanding, even faster than light. If you travel to the edge of the universe in a rocket, traveling at nearly the speed of light, you will never reach the end. In the currently generally accepted cosmological model, the standard cosmological model, the universe is considered as an infinite, ever-expanding space. This means that there is no clear physical boundary at the edge of the universe that can be identified. Some alternative cosmological theories or modifications of the standard cosmological model, such as the multiverse theory, propose that our universe may be just one of many existing universes. One theory also says that there is nothing at the edge of the universe. The universe continues to expand towards infinity. When discussing the large-scale structure of the cosmos, astronomers say that space-time is curved or non-existent at the center of the cosmos. The universe is finite but infinite. What the heck are they talking about? Let's imagine we live in a foreign country where everyone there is completely flat. We call it flatland. Some of us are square, some people are triangular, others have more complex shapes. We run here and there, in and out of flat buildings, busy with flat business. Everyone in the flatland has width and length, but no height. We understand left and right, front and back, but have no knowledge of up and down, not even a bit. One day, a three-dimensional being, for example, shaped like an apple, appears in the flat world, hovering above it. After noticing a very attractive and playful square creature entering its flat house, the apple decides, for the sake of interdimensional friendship, to say, Hello, how are you? I am a visitor from the third dimension. The poor square creature looked around his closed house and saw no one. What's worse, he thought the greeting that came from above seemed to come from his own flat body. Exasperated with being ignored, the apple descended onto flat land. Now, three-dimensional beings can exist on flat land. Only only a part of it, only cross-sections can be seen. Only the points of contact with the surface of the flat land. Apples crawling on flat land will appear at first as dots, then as almost circular pieces that increase in size over time. The square sees a single point that appears in an enclosed space in its two-dimensional world and slowly grows to become almost a circle. A strange, shape-shifting creature suddenly appeared. Rejected and displeased with the insensitivity of a perfectly flat world, the apple crashes into the square causing the square to float around and around in a mysterious third dimension. At first, the square didn't understand what was going on, completely out of experience. But eventually, he realized that he was looking at flat land from a strange perspective. Above, he can see into closed spaces. He could see his flat comrades. He was looking at his universe from a unique and very strange perspective. Traveling through another dimension provides unexpected advantages, a kind of X-ray vision. Finally, like a falling leaf, the square slowly descends to the surface. From the perspective of friends in the flatlands, he mysteriously disappeared from an enclosed space, then suddenly reappeared in a shocking manner. Gosh, what happened to you? said his flat friends. I thought I was on top. Friends in flatlands do not believe it and think that the square man is hallucinating. When thinking interdimensionally, we don't need to limit ourselves to two dimension. We can imagine a one-dimensional world where everyone is just a line, or even a zero-dimensional magical world, that is, a point, 
but perhaps even more interesting is the question of the higher dimensions. Could there be a fourth physical dimension? We can imagine building a cube in the following way. Take a line of a given length and move it a distance equal to its length in a direction perpendicular to itself. That way, it will form a square. Move the square a distance equal to the length of its side and a direction perpendicular to itself and we get a cube. We know cubes form shadows, which we usually picture as two squares whose corners are connected. When we examine a cube's image in two dimensions, we notice that not all lines look the same and not all angles are perpendicular. Three dimensional objects have never been described perfectly in terms of changing their shape to two dimensions. This is the price to be paid for missing dimensions in the projected geometry. Now take and carry our three-dimensional cube at angles perpendicular to itself, moving through the fourth physical dimension, not left-right, not back and forth, not up and down, but simultaneously perpendicular to all of those directions. I can't pinpoint which way it is, but I can imagine its presence. In this way, we create a four-dimensional hypercube, also known as a tesseract. I can't show you the tesseract because we are trapped in three dimensions. What I can show you is the shadow of the tesseract in three dimensions. A tesseract shadow is similar to two nested cubes, all of whose corners are connected by a line. Whereas in a real tesseract in four dimensions, all the lines will be the same length and all the angles will be perpendicular. Think of the universe like the land of the flats, except that unbeknownst to its inhabitants, their two-dimensional universe bends through a third dimension. When the people of the flatlands travelled not very far, their universe seemed quite flat. But when one of them travels far enough along what appears to be a perfectly straight line, he discovers a great mystery. Even though he has not encountered the barrier and has never made a turn, he has somehow returned to where he started. His two-dimensional universe must have curved, bent, and turned through a mysterious third dimension. He couldn't imagine the third dimension, but he could deduce it. Add up all the dimensions in this description, one by one, and you are in a situation that might apply to us. Where is the center of the cosmos? Is there an edge of the universe? What's beyond that? In a two-dimensional universe, which is curved through a third dimension, there is no center, at least not on a spherical surface. The center of such a universe is not within the universe. It is in the third dimension and inaccessible, that is, in the ball. Even though the area on the surface of a sphere is large, there is no edge to this universe, finite but infinite, and the question of what lies beyond becomes meaningless. Flat beings cannot escape their two dimensions on their own. Add up all the dimensions one by one, and you end up in a situation that might be ours. A four-dimensional hypersphere universe with no center and edges, and nothing outside of it. Why do all galaxies appear to be moving away from us? The hypersphere expands from a point, like a four-dimensional balloon being inflated, instantly creating more space in the universe. Sometime after the start of the expansion of the universe, galaxies condensed and spread across the surface of the hypersphere. There are astronomers in every galaxy, and the light they see is also trapped in the curved surface of a hypersphere. When the sphere expands, astronomers in any galaxy would expect all other galaxies to be moving away from it. There is no special frame of reference. The farther a galaxy is, the faster it is moving away. Galaxies are attached and bound in space while space itself expands. When asked where the Big Bang occurred in the present-day universe, the answer is obvious. Everywhere. The Big Bang was not an explosion from a point in space or a point in time. Because space-time itself expanded simultaneously with the Big Bang. There was no time before the Big Bang. That means nothing. Just as the absence of space-time before the Big Bang, this also applies to the case of the edge of the universe. We do not know what is at the edge of the universe. Just like a flat land, if we travel very, very far across the universe, then we will return to where we started. All of that because we are trapped in a three-dimensional space. It would be very difficult or even impossible for humans to get out of three-dimensional space. Unless, say, there is a foreign entity from the four-dimensional world who is playing pranks and pranking us by throwing us out of three-dimensional space. Just like the case of the square, 
we will see the universe in a different and very strange perspective. We can see the entire contents of our universe from a four-dimensional perspective. Most likely, we can also see the center or core of the universe, and we can even see the ends of the universe that are not accessible to our friends in the three-dimensional world. All these experiences can be felt if we understand about four-dimensional space-time. The big question is, are there four dimensional creatures? Who knows, we won't know until we meet him. Thanks for watching our video. If you like our content, don't forget to press the like and subscribe buttons below. Activate the bell button to get video notifications from us next.